Okay. Okay, so hello everyone, I'm John Higgins and I'm contributing writer to Film and TV Now and I'm delighted to welcome one and all to this interview with a uh, special with filmmaker Paul Rashid, who's the writer and director of this brand new interactive film called The Gallery. And the film is scheduled to be screened as part of the Le Independent Direction Film Festival or Indies in Leeds on February the 22nd, 2023. Um, it's a tale of one gallery separated across two decades separated by 40 years and it's combined with a mix of noir violence and audience participation would you say that's a description paul i think that's i think you've hit the nail on the head there okay <laughs> so um first of all warm welcome so i've got to ask you because i've only seen the trailer and i when i saw this i thought okay so it's it's difficult to describe because normally you know it's a film as such but it's also a chance for the audience to get involved so Tell us how this started and how how sort of wild was this idea when you kicked off? Well, it, it wasn't that wild when it kicked off because this is a film that I've wanted to make for many years, actually. So I, have, I had the idea and the concept um, and that was just written as a you know a traditional linear film for, for many, many years. But then in 2019, I basically exclusively got into making interactive films, which I've been doing um, you know, consistently since since then, and I, it, it's the only type of film I make now. Um, so I'm, I'm something of a specialist in interactive films. So um, of, the more I made it, the more I kind of understood, you know, got to grips with the, the you know the language of of storytelling in an interactive way. I sort of revisited some of the the previous scripts I'd written, and and, and I saw that the gallery was one that you know, really suited. It fitted the format like a glove, being a hostage thriller. And obviously, you know, the, the you know, with every decision that you make as a protagonist in that situation is high stakes made and, and may determine, you know, your fate or the fates of others and so on and so forth. Um, so it just kind of fit the format like a glove and I revisited the script and I built it out again. So um, yeah, it was sort of, it was, it was, a, it was a concept that then kind of found its, its, its partner, so to speak, once I entered the interactive format. OK, so film is normally traditionally two dimensional. And if we do become in more involved, it's either through just watching it anyway. And we do get involved because we empathize with the characters and that's what traditional storytelling is. So um, what are your hopes for this type of storytelling in the future? Uh, I think it's it's pretty much what what's what what is happening at the moment what, that we're finding with the gallery is that it's it's starting to you know branch out to the you know to the filmic audience and this you know theatrical and you know hopefully via you know the streamers take it up soon as well because it's it's very much a style of storytelling that you know people were familiar with in the nineties with choose your own adventure books um, and very much through video games you have you know you have a, you have a lot of agency in 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 the story in the character that you build and the story that uh, that you tell in many ways and customizing your story so to speak so it, it, these are these are concepts that have been around in 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 storytelling in other mediums um for 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 many many years and you know just be allowing that these type this type of you know audience participation and agency basically for a viewer to, to, to just to give them more agency i think it's it's a natural progression to for it to kind of get into you know the film and tv world as well mm -hmm. so tell us about your cast i mean um because you you i i was looking at your website before we came on and i did see that you've worked with a number of these people before so tell us about the um you know how do you cast people and were they people that you were comfortable working with or there people that you had to new people, for example? Well, uh, yeah. So the, the casting director, Heather Baston is someone I've worked with um, on, on a lot of my projects, all of my interactive projects uh, bar one since um, 20, uh, since 2019. Um, so, you know, we, I've got a really good rapport with her and, uh, and, you know, I, I think it was also, you know, we were during lockdown. I don't know if being during lockdown made difference that we had a lot of actors who were at home uh, wanting, wanting, wanting to work. So it, we got a bit lucky in that, in that regard, but um, you know, we, we reached out to, to, you know, George, George Blagden and Anna Popperwell are two leads. They're two actors whose work I've been very familiar with over the, over the last few years. Um, you know, and obviously from the Narnia films and Rain and then Georgian Vikings and Versailles. So I was huge fans of their work, but also, you know, other, other actors in there like Cara Toynton, Rebecca Root, Fainty Balligan, Richard Fleishman, Susanna Hamilton, I had worked with before. So, you know, these are actors who I, I was very aware of. And then, you know, when, when, you know, a casting director suggests them, you're kind of like, 
they'd be really good. Now that that you know that'll be a, be great to work with them. I can imagine them in this role, and you know I've, I've, I'm a fan of them. So it. It's 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 kind of just the natural organic route that you have when you're casting with a cast with a really good casting director who, who understands you and is familiar with what you're looking for. Uh, and then luckily, you know, we we approach them, and luckily they they all like the script and the project and what we were doing enough. And um, yeah, the one thing led to another, and, and here we are. Yeah, and tell us some more about your production team. I mean, what, what, are they are they all part of the? You know, did, were they through the interaction sector, or were they? Did they all come with? you know, with um, different experiences. I mean, what, tell us more about them. Yeah. Well, well, that, a lot of them. So this uh, cinematographer, Harry Dash Stewart is someone who I've worked with um, extensively over the past few years. He was the, um, the, the B cam operator on, on my last linear traditional film, white chamber. Uh, and we've been working together ever since. So, you know, it was a natural and, you know, cultivating our creative, creative relationship. And, and, you know, it was a natural fit for him to, be the cinematographer on this um you know there are there were plenty of other people who i've worked with before and most crucially i'd worked with on interactive films before because you know the the, the format brings certain challenges that you might not uh, you know some people might not be used to on traditional linear films you know having you know for instance costumes or having to make multiple 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 different yeah versions of them depending on 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 what you know on what uh route is taken you know someone you know someone gets a bullet wound in one one you know through through their through their arm in one on one branch of the story but they don't have it on the other you always need to have two you know two two of those costumes on on standby um you know script supervisor same thing with continuity you have to keep an eye on things that may be happening if you make one decision on one branch side of the story and seeing if they have a knock on effect to anything on the other side and, and that, you know, that you're always staying consistent. So there's, there's, it helped that, you know, a lot of the, the, the crew I'd worked with had worked with me before and worked with me on interactive films before. So um, it, yeah, it was, it was very lucky again, lockdown, everyone was available. So it, it kind of helped every, it kind of helped getting together a, a crew who already had a ready made rapport and familiarity with what we were trying to do. OK, so let's talk a little bit about this independent direction film festival. Is it something you've done before? I mean, what tell us a bit more about the overview of it. And I mean, because I understand it's in part of the Leeds Film Festival. I mean, yes. how, how can what what does it what sort of things does it cover? Is it seminars and workshops and everything or is it just? Yes. So it has it. it I think it's very much, uh, you know, facing the the next generation of filmmakers. So the younger, younger generation. But um, I think that for that reason, they, you know, they really try and, you know, push the envelope with, you know, having, you know, maybe more experimental filmmakers or people, you know, people who are exploring different formats and just have a very eclectic, wide ranging um, program. Uh, so luckily we we fit into that and and but it's not the first um, film fair it's the UK premiere uh, of the gallery in in cinemas uh, as an interactive cinematic experience but we've we've played it at some film festivals in France the Dinard Film Festival uh, and a festival in Rennes and one in Lyon that's coming up so you know the the interactive cinema screenings are something that that we've done before and that we know work and there seems to be kind of a you know slowly snowballing interest in in this type of cinematic screening um which you know for the first time we're going to be showing to a paying public audience in the uk um next wednesday the 22nd uh in leeds okay so just going back briefly we'll talk a little more about the process anyway um where did you shoot and for how long so we shot in finchley in uh north london uh in a in a manner called uh, stevens house which is very near finchley central station uh which has you know public gardens that you can go and walk, go and walk in if uh, if you ever want to visit it it's fantastic mm. um and we shot for 6 weeks uh from february 2021 to march 2021 uh which was during a a a a, a full lockdown <laughs> it was during a covid peak mm -hmm. So um, in, we were able to, you know, by get the advantage by is by getting a, you know, a massive location like Stevens House, we were able to basically create our own bubble in there. And, and most of the, the, the film, you know, takes place in and around that location. We could use the different rooms and dress them as different sets and so on and so forth while stay maintaining that you know our our bio bubble so to speak so okay. yeah that's how it works. um so let's talk a little about the whole essence of this interactive screening because i'm curious to know because i did read in it and mm. i understand that when audience members arrive they're given glow stick mm -hmm. devices which basically are like you kind of click it's a bit like i suppose it's a bit like the 
would you like to know more moments in Starship Troopers, you know, where they click on it and you go on that. I think that's, I got a sense of it because on one of the trade, you got the two things like, and you can, you can decide emotion. So, okay. So the logistics, because we know that technology can be challenging. I mean, that's my biggest worry because nine times out of 10, whenever I've done two special screenings, something's slightly gone wrong or something. So what were the challenges and the logistics of making all this happen in the context of a screening like this? Well, so that's a really good question. And and we did in, in you know, we 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 did tests and, and saw what was the best way to to, to get the audience participation. Uh, so we tried apps, we tried, you know, we tried all sorts of tech, but we found the lo-fi option of giving people glow sticks in their hand that they just could, you know, that that was the best way, it was the most foolproof way to 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 do it. Um so basically that 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 kind of you know simplified the, the process in many ways. And then as far as the exhibition goes, you basically, we have the interactive film on a laptop. Uh, someone just goes and plugs it into the screen and it plays it. And they are basic. And every time a decision happens, uh, the options appear on the bottom of the screen. The screen f- freezes momentarily for about, for about four seconds. Two set for, for about two seconds, one option is hovered on. Everyone who wants to vote for that option raises their glow stick. Then it hovered, the, the other option becomes highlighted. Anyone who wants to vote for that one, or if there's a third and a fourth, so on. Whichever one is the most popular, it's very democratic, um, gets chosen, and the audience is effectively building the story together and suffering consequences of their decisions together. So <laughs> it, it it becomes a very communal, um, spirited affair, especially if some people are, you know, there are plenty of groans and, you know, squabbling and, and, and bits and pieces during those sorts of decision point intervals um so it's a very fun communal kind of experience mm-hmm. i've got a sneaking suspicion you you're going to before long you'll have drink along a gallery you know people drinking shots and stuff like that i think that'll be <laughs> not that i'm expecting it because i think ultimately i think people should be drawn into it but i kind of get a sense that the more interactive you get but i think there'll probably be a few bad relationship arguments going on anyway but which i think is the idea of it anyway so um one thing i did understand was that it was used in a case study at the industry event focus london so i wanted to would you share with us a little bit about what was the reaction of participants at that particular event how did they react uh that's a really good question i think people are, are very intrigued by it because it is very much the convergence of film and game in the sense in the form um, so, you know, so the the gallery itself now it, and in all the other interactive films I've done have mainly been exhibited up until this point uh, on gaming platforms. So, you know, the gallery itself, it's available on Steam, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and there's an app on your phones on, on iOS or Android. Um, but it's, you know, it, now it's also now it's becoming more and more of a possibility that it can also be exhibited in cinemas and hopefully sometime in the near future on via streaming platforms, via some, you know, web software. So it, it, it's it's I think that's why people are quite interested in it, especially as an independent filmmaker. You know, it's quite empowering being able to make something that can be, you know, released to a massive audience um, on a, ma- you know, on a, you know, o- o- across some really, really popular platforms. Um, so it's 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 very much, you know, that crossover. It's it's equal parts of live action video game as well as an interactive film. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, these are they're, they're two mediums that have, you know, have been wanting to cross over and are still crossing over. You watch The Last of Us on HBO is, you know, sometimes shot for shot exactly like the video game that it's based on. So I think mm-hmm. that it's kind of the right time now that people want to look at an exploration of how these two mediums can can complement each other and we're just kind of one subsect of that yeah so obviously we've got to talk a little bit about your background and upbringing because i understand that you were mentored by your own producer father neville um mm-hmm. growing up and you 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 mentioned on your website how important and how lucky how important he was to you so what what did he teach you that has stayed with you in this creative journey um i think I think being, I think open-mindedness, as I said, you know, I was really lucky that I, you know, dad was making independent, he was a cinema operator to start off with. Um, so, you know, growing, growing up, uh, it was, it, I was basically, you know, able to, you know, go and watch lots of and lots of films as a kid in the cinema growing up. So that's kind of where the interest came. And then he moved into sort of independent filmmaking 
during my sort of more formative teenage years. So I was able to kind of like, you know, shadow him, go on sets and see what how they worked. And, you know, if he ever had a script that he, you know, he wanted a second opinion on, he'd he'd give my reaction as a as a young as a as a very young person. So I was reading scripts by professional script writers. I was on professional film sets um at, at a very early age, which is, you know, again, it's a very lucky fast track kind of education that you can get. And um that sort of I think it's the open mindedness which he, he with which he always told me to whenever he would give me a script to read. And I think that's probably the 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 the, the process where I learned the most, um, you know, leading up to what I do now um, was just reading lots and lots of scripts, not not famous scripts, not necessary scripts that ever got made, but just lots what lots and lots of writers were doing. And I was able and I kind of it allowed me to of various different genres and it always it just allowed me to kind of work out what I liked, what I didn't like, what was working for me what wasn't working for me and kind of the craft of storytelling. Um, obviously now I've, you know, I've read some, some, some of the more formal books that you read, you know, story by Robert McKee and so on, but that was kind of the most formative, um, you know, men mentoring, you know, benefit beneficial um, process that he gave me. And, you know, he, he always told me, you've always got to finish them. Like, even if you don't like them, even if, you know, your first, your first five pages, you turn off, always keep an open mind. There's always something in there and let me know what the good things are, what the bad things are. The first good thing you may see may not be until page 80, but you got to read it all the way through. So um, I think I would say that's kind of a, sorry, it's a long winded answer to a simple question. Oh, no, no, it's that. all right. I mean, it's very <laughs> fascinating. I mean, I, I used to work as a projectionist myself, so it's always fascinating mm. to learn about what somebody does before it, because often we only ever see the result. We don't see the run up, you mm. know, the journey, which is what a lot of independent filmmakers, you know, people who start out in the industry, they're not aware of, they don't really appreciate their own journey, whereas that's mm. what it is. So I've got three more questions before we wrap up. I mean, I want to talk a little bit about the other aspects. I was looking at your website again, and you've worked in narrative film and music video as well. I mean, how have those two traditional mediums influenced your work on the gallery? Um, I think, I, I, I think you know, the gallery for all intents and purposes, when you make an interactive film, you know, you, you, there are lots of features that are very much the same as making a traditional linear film. You know, the, obviously you're shooting a lot more content because you need to shoot all the branches and you've got to watch things like the continuity and, you know, the, you, you've got to make sure your actor's emotions aren't skewed to one path and not the other. But aside from that, you know, you know the way you shoot something, you, you know, how you move the camera, you know, all, you know, what you want from actors, blocking, all of those things are exactly the same as in a traditional film. So, you know, the, having had a background in you know making film traditional films traditional music videos and getting a grounding of you know the craft and how to tell a story and the last traditional linear film I made White Chamber um you know that that was that was a real learning 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 curve for me and and you know it it, it I think it, it it was it was sort of what springboarded me into interactive film because it sort of played quite a few film festivals in 2018 and Sean and McDonald won, won the Scottish BAFTA so that kind of put me up put me on the map of sort of another producer who was getting into interactive films, like what I did on that. And then said, look, I like what you did there. And White Chamber itself, I, as a writer, I've always been interested in playing with story structure and fragmented timelines. So in White Chamber, there is a fragmented timeline in, in you know, act one is set on one timeline, then act two is set on another one that it that ties into act one. And then by the time you get to act three, having seen them in those order, it makes sense of what was happening in act one kind of thing. So I was, my mind was always geared towards even when in, within linear films, trying to play with the form, play with timeline, play with the structure. Um, so I think it was, that was kind of what helped me, um, you know, on a technical aspect, being able to just, you know, work and, you know, focus on, you know, that don't have any of the interactive riffraff, but actually just focus on making, telling good cinematic stories in short form music videos or on feature films but then also you know I was also trying to experiment I had a you know I was able to lightly experiment before making the big leap to telling something completely non-linear mm -hmm. so my last two questions the first one is is obviously what would genres would you like to explore now that you've got this idea together and you're doing the gallery and you've got an idea that you can do you know like with anything you know with new filmmaking challenge you can do it um, how would you transition this stuff into other genres? I mean, could you could you do like a rom com or a a sex film? I don't know if I, it, <laughs> you know, I, 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 it, those it, are two extreme ones. But I just I was just curious to know how you would use it. 
Yeah, it, well, it's very funny you mentioned the rom-com because I've actually done two, one of which just came out yesterday on Valentine's Day, so called Ten Dates, uh, which is a sequel to one called Five Dates, which I which I did. Um, so, you know, I've done four features uh, in, in the interactive space. So the gallery is a hostage thriller. The complex is a sci-fi thriller. And then I've done two rom-coms. So, it, 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 you know, again, it ties into, again, it, it ties into traditional filmmaking. You know, you, the one thing you're taught as a screenwriter is, you know, you need to have characters that are making meaningful decisions, you know, to propel the story forward. You know, you, your protagonist needs to be making a meaningful decisions that have cause and effect. Um, so, you know, it, it, any any story, any good filmic story, regardless of genre, needs to have that principle in it anyway, which by definition means any genre can be interactive. So, you know, as long as it has high stakes decisions and you're giving the agency of those high stakes decisions to the audience, I think there's 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 no limit on what could um what could become interactive. Um, you know, sex films included. Okay. Well <laughs> I, not I, me, all me, I'll me say is it, no, no, I I think that was kind of a left field thing anyway. I was just curious. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you've answered my question very and finally, Paul, before we leave you, um, what are you most proud of about the gallery? Oh, um, wow. Uh, there's so much I'm proud of. Um, I mean, the fact that, you know, we shot it during a lock, a lockdown where at that time, you know, if you had one case, we uh, we would have been shut down for basically two weeks, which would have been a real, which would have really derailed things. The fact that we, you know, I'm proud that we, you know, we all came, the whole cast and crew came together and that it exists in that way. But, you know, I, I, I love the way it looks. Um, you know the the difference between the two eras uh the cinematography that harry das achieved um and the way we were able to you know create two two films within one film that markedly feel very different and era appropriate that was something i'd never done before um which which was fantastic i'm i'm really happy with you know the 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 performances of all the actors i'm really happy with the interactivity of it you know the 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 real sense of um, how every decision does matter, and then it has, and you can palpably feel that every time you come to make a decision um, from what the audiences say. Um, and I'm, and, and I'm just, and I'm proud of what we're doing with the inter in interactive cinema screenings with it. So, um, you know, I'm happy with it creatively. I'm happy with it um, technically, and and just sort of wear it for what it is for the film that I wanted to make by the time I'd. Uh, I've just turned thirty, so for the film that I kind of wanted to make by the time I turned thirty, I, I feel like the gallery is. You know, one of the, you know, I'm really proud that that's my most recent film that, you know, my most recent release, well, the one yesterday as well. But, you know, it, 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 I think it's a real good representation of where I am now as a filmmaker and 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 uh, and where I want to go to. OK, well, listen, Paul, thank you very much. I mean, I'm certainly going to be checking this film out at some point. I mean, the trailer already sounds good. And I think as people will find us, as I'm sure they will. Um, it will be an interesting experience. I mean, hopefully um, people won't get too carried away. Um, but thank you, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, okay, but thank you very much. Um, so just generally to wrap up, um, as mentioned, the gallery screening at the Independent Direction Film Festival. Um, tickets are available at www.leadsfilm.com. There's a, there's, it's in a drop-down menu on that website. Also keep up your eyes open for upcoming screenings of the film. For more interviews like this, you can watch a replay of this on my YouTube channel, John Higgins Film Review. And you can also check out my articles and reviews at www.filmatvnow.com and also my new film resource website, www.whatmovie.co.uk. So, Paul, thank you very much again. And uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you so much, John. Okay.